Oh shit, there's two behind you guys. He's like, blown. Coming through the open. Oh shit. I heard one. A lot. One coming Damn. towards Damn. I know. I killed so many of them. <laughs> talking about me in the chat. Look how many kills I have in my death. Hey everyone, Jarek here. Welcome to my gun guide for the trench gun. As most of you realized when you first started playing Battlefield 1, you slam fire the trench gun in this game. I assume most of you know what slam firing means, but I'll explain it for the few of you that don't. Slam firing with a shotgun means that you pull the trigger down on the shotgun, you pump the shotgun, and when you push the pump forward, the gun automatically shoots again since you're holding the trigger down. This gives you a faster rate of fire, at 138 rounds per minute. For some context, the Model 10 shoots at 78 rounds per minute, so the trench gun does shoot moderately faster. Now the trench gun has three variants and all of them differ quite a bit, so I'm going to have to show the stats a little bit differently this time around. I'll try not to take up most of your screen with stats so you can actually see the gameplay happening, but no guarantees. Both the Hunter and Backboard variants do 8.4 damage per pellet and drop off to 4.2 damage per pellet at range. The Sweeper variant does 7.2 damage per pellet and that drops to 2.4 damage per pellet at range so the sweeper is already weaker than the other two. As you would expect, the hunter variant has the most range, doing its full 8.4 damage per pellet up to 15 meters away. The backboard is runner-up, doing its full 8.4 damage per pellet up to 11 meters away, and the sweeper is in last place, doing its full 7.2 damage per pellet up to only 9 meters away. The sweeper does have something on its side though. Both the hunter and backboard variants only shoot 14 pellets per shot, whereas the sweeper shoots 21 pellets per shot. In theory, this makes sense. This is supposed to be encouraging you to clear out trenches and to get up close in their face, hence the sweeper name, so it should have the least range and the most number of pellets, being a devastating up close weapon. But in execution, there's a few other twists that make this not really the case. Mostly the spread. To no one's surprise, the Hunter variant has the tightest grouping. Its horizontal and vertical dispersion is 1.8. The backboard is next, with a worse grouping, with its horizontal and vertical dispersion being 2.25. The sweeper is... Well, kind of strange. It's effectively Battlefield 1's version of the Battlefield 4's duckbill choke. Its horizontal dispersion is 2.7, which is pretty bad, but its vertical dispersion is 0.45. This essentially means that you're going to be shooting a line out of your gun, and I get it in concept. It's supposed to be clearing out trenches. You're supposed to be able to hit numerous people at once, but the result is usually just numerous people taking a lot of damage, no one actually dying, and then you getting lit up by about 5 people. All three have the same muzzle velocity, with every pellet firing at 330 meters per second. This is very slow, but it's also a shotgun, so this isn't really a big deal. The magazine sizes are the same amongst every variant at 5 shotgun shells per tubular magazine, and the reload times are also the same and are also fairly painless. You can always just top off putting in one shell at a time. The empty reload time is not that painful either, as he just has this quick pumping animation at the end. The recoil does differ per variant, and it does actually matter. Since you can slam fire this gun, you might find yourself shooting at the sky above your target more often than you want if you don't control your gun. Both the Hunter and the Sweeper variants have the same recoil. Nine vertical recoil, which is pretty significant, and this is the part that really stands out. Again, you might be shooting above your target if you don't pay attention. The recoil left and right are the same at 1.5, making the recoil basically be directly upward. The recoil decrease is 3, which isn't really a lot. Again, the bigger the number, the better here, so you're going to have to make sure your gun settles back down on target when you're done shooting. The backboard has the least amount of recoil at 6.3 vertical and 1.05 left and right. Its recoil decrease is also the best at 4.5. And the recoil is really what the backboard has going for it here. Although I don't think that's enough to make it better than the Hunter, it does help. And since the trench gun is a pump action shotgun, the first shot multiplier is 1. Which again, makes sense because every shot will be the first shot. If you were wondering why I'm not showing the stats for the spread when you're moving and not moving, ADSing and not ADSing, it's because they're the same amongst every variant. So where does that leave us? Well unfortunately this means that the sweeper is pretty bad. It's supposed to fill a specific role, but it doesn't really do that role very well. Up next means that the trench gun backboard is... Well, simply not as good as the Hunter. It does have less recoil, yeah, it's got that going for it, but it has a much worse spread and less range. So ultimately, the only trench gun variant you should be using is the trench gun Hunter. It's got the tightest spread, and the same magazine size as the other ones. Its recoil may not be as good as the backboard, but it's fairly easy to control nonetheless. Now, I can understand a situation where in extreme close ranges you might want the backboard over the Hunter, 
but I would just tell you to take that extra millisecond it takes to properly aim, and then shoot with the Hunter instead, as the Hunter is going to be a more versatile weapon. Honestly, I do think the Trench Gun Hunter is probably one of the more underrated guns, purely because it's overshadowed by the Bottle 10 Hunter. It is actually quite good, and as you were seeing in this footage, I can get kills at pretty far ranges. So once again, just pick up the Trench Gun Hunter, it is by far the best variant out of these three. That about sums up my gun guide, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.